Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you something totally different than I usually do in this channel. As some of you might notice, I've been posting a lot of pictures of unique looking plants so to speak on my social media accounts a lot of you guys have been asking me what they are or where i've got them or how do you take care of them or stuff like that so i was thinking that maybe since i have a channel you know i have a voice maybe i could also share them to you and make videos of them and hoping that maybe you learn to love them too it's like a hobby of mine right now and it's really very therapeutic like gardening it's not really garden you know i'm like really a green thumb kind of guy i'm a black thumb anyway this is just an introduction video of the plants that i'm talking about and they are called airplanes so a couple of months ago i thought of buying plants for my apartment and stumbled upon this idea of collecting succulents or cactuses or cacti anyway the, both terms are correct so i headed straight to a nearby garden center to buy my first baby plant and as I got to the part of the store where they exhibit a wide variety of lovely succulents and beautiful cactuses, a group of plants displayed at a small spot suddenly caught my attention. So at first, I really had no idea what they were or if they were even real. So they, they, actually they look so odd but spot on stunning. I remember picking up a tilancha kaput mitose and saying, yep, this is my plan. Just a disclaimer. I'm still new to this kind of thing. And that's another thing when I'm why I wanted to share this with you. It's like I'm starting with this and it's like we're starting at this hobby together. Wait, what? It's like I wanted to learn about these plants and about this hobby with you guys and I want to share it with you. I know that I'm not an expert about these things, about, about air plants and stuff like that, but I wanted to learn it together with you guys and, you know, act dumb in front of the camera. You know, if you have questions or if there are experts of you out there, if there are experts of you out there, it would be a great help if you comment your expertise down below or if I say something stupid about Talanchas, maybe you could comment down some pointers or some corrections below. That would help a lot and it will help me and some other guy out there who wanted to learn more about the, these plants. An air plant, also known as a Talantia, is a member of a million families such as pineapples. But no, Mary, you cannot eat them. Air plants are native to Central and South America. There are approximately 600 species of air plants known, not to mention the hybrids. Oh my god, I'm gonna be making hybrids. Talantias can be found in a wide range of habitats, ranging from arid deserts and mountainous areas to warm and humid forests. I'm not really sure if these plants can live or thrive in the Philippines. I remember when I was still young, our neighbor used to have an air plant. Now that I think about it, it was actually a Spanish moss, which is also an air plant. And she called it a hanging plant because you literally just hang them and they just grow and she just sprays them every day or every other day. Kind of think of it right now, that was also an air plant. Yeah, I've been researching about these plants a lot nowadays <laughs> and they're quite interesting. The more I research about them, the more I Google them, the more I learn to love them. And I'm hoping that you will feel the same way too. How do air plants thrive? So air plants are epiphytes, which means that they grow on other plants, but they are not parasitic. This is the reason why Talantias produce a small root system. Yeah, they have roots, but they don't really need them. You know, you don't. They, it's okay if you're gonna cut the roots off. 
because you know they just use it to anchor themselves into the trees, rocks, and so on and so forth. So telangiums have also have hair-like growth or outgrowth on the leaves called the trichomes. Oh my God! See, I'm learning new words. We are learning new words. These are scientific words, guys. These trichomes help air plants take in water and nutrients from the air, hence the name, air plants. Okay, so they also say the fluffier the trichomes appear, the greater amount of sunlight the plant can tolerate. But, 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 be careful, because I've also read somewhere, it's legit, the information is legit. Do not expose your air plants to direct sunlight because it will burn them. It's dangerous for them. Mm -hmm. yep. Air plants also need water. Yeah. So missing them three times a week or soaking them for two to four hours once a week would make them very happy. I'm following this routine. I'm following this routine too. Sometimes I also dip them. There's soaking, there's dipping, and there's misting. Well, I'm gonna discuss all about this in the next few videos. You know, we're gonna go slow. Produce flowers? Yes, air plants produce vibrant flowers, actually, but they only get to flower once in their lifetime, so it's kind of sad for you know those who love flowers. The length of the blooming cycle of air plants varies significantly between species. Like I mentioned earlier, there are almost 600 species of air plants out there, and some of them are easy bloomers with star with short-lived flowers, and some can take a very long time to reach blooming age, but their flowers uh, can last for several weeks, just like the Tilantia serographica. This is also called as the king of Tilantias, so I've heard. Because this can grow very, very big, its flower can last very, very long. I also, I actually have one of these, but you know, it's, it's just a baby, it's so small. How do air plants reproduce? Telangias reproduce by standard means like any other ordinary plant, you know, through seed production. But they can also produce new plants around the parent plant. Yeah, these plants can produce baby plants, like literally. Like, they call them pups. <laughs> so cute. So after flowering, telangias produce the next generation of air plants as offsets. Or like I said, like pops, they call it pops or offshoots. Those are the terms. So in most species, these, these pops appear at the base of the parent plant. This is one of the things that I'm most excited of in taking care of these plants. I'm excited to see them flower because it's only once in a lifetime. And I'm excited for them to produce pops. Usually each species or each plant can produce like three to four pups. And these baby air plants can either be left with a mother plant, which would eventually form an attractive clump. You call them clump. I'm I'm saying some, you know, terms here. Or you can also remove them, I mean the pops, you can also remove them when they are one third the size of the mother telangia plant to grow on as a new air plant. So you cannot remove these baby plants when they're not one third of the mother plant because they will not survive. Because at that stage, they're still taking their nutrients, most of their nutrients from the mother plant. Sounds like a real baby. Another, another, bittersweet story to air plants. From the time the air from the time, from the time the air plant starts producing pops. Remember they're gonna produce flowers and then after that it'll be producing pops. And after that it will also start to wither and eventually die. Oh no it's beautiful. These plants have a beautiful life cycle. Is a good choice for a houseplant? Yes. 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 
so these plants require far less maintenance than any other houseplant. You can get creative with them and the options of displaying them are limitless, literally. You can place them in a bottle or a terrarium or mount them on stones or wood, but you know, personally, I don't do that because it feels like I'm gonna, I, I might hurt them. You know, they are living creatures after all. So I don't glue them. Um, you know, collectors or caretakers do that. They mount them on uh, a wood or a stone using a glue. There's a specific kind of glue that you use, but you know, I don't know if I'm crazy, but for me, I think that it hurts the plant. Or you can also hang them using strings, like you've also done that. I've been doing that. So, like this one. Here's just one of the gazillion ways you can flaunt your tilantias. Alien-like jellyfish realness. Isn't that awesome? Hey guys, I can't wait to share more videos with you about these plants and how to take care of them and how to display them. You know, we'll be doing DIY arts and crafts kind of thing just for these plants. And I'll be showing you things that I've learned and things that I've found out about them. And we'll be learning about these together. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Did I just say episode? Oh yeah, maybe I'm gonna be doing a series about this. For those who haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that red button down below. Is it red in all devices? I'm not really sure. But anyway, like, and for you airplant newbies, for you guys who have just discovered airplants, just stick right there. Maybe you want to love them too. And for you guys who are experts in airplants, please share some knowledge down below. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. See you on the next video. Bye.